Hey guys, in this video, we're going to show you how to create a Bitbucket project, connect to Git using Git Kraken or Source Tree, and then assign tasks or cards or issues in Jira and manage your Unity project. So the first thing you need to know is that Git is actually some sort of a server where you can push files and where your entire team can um, pull different files or push different files to collaborate. So the first thing that we need to do is to create a repository. Uh, in this example, we're using Bitbucket because we're working with Atlation, which is the company. Um, you can use whatever Git repository of your choice, uh, GitLab or whatever. So you see me here creating a repository, assigning a name and a project to it. And I'm going to create the repository. Once you have a repository created, the second thing to do is to clone um, the project on your computer. So cloning is the process of taking a copy on what's on the server on your own local machine. So everyone in the team needs to clone the project. So you see me here in Git Kraken, I'm using Git Kraken, uh, cloning the project and getting a local copy on my computer. Once you have the repository cloned on your computer, you can now create your Unity project. If you already have a Unity project, you can simply take whatever you have and drop it in the repository folder on your computer. In my case, I created a Unity project and then I created the project in the repository. So Git Kraken picked up on all the changes that I was doing. Next thing I'm doing here is I'm choosing which file I want to push on the server so Justin can start working. So by staging the files, you actually choose which one you want to push. You can see that there's no, even though I committed, there's no push on the server until you actually hit push. So once I pushed, you can see that Justin now can clone the project itself. So he's going to take the link on Bitbucket and Justin is using source tree, which is very, very similar to Git Kraken. It's really a matter of choice. And then he's pasting the link, the URL for the project, and he's going to choose a local destination on his computer. And when he clones it, he gets what I pushed initially. In his case, he doesn't have to create a new Unity project. He can simply open the project that he cloned on his machine and have access to whatever I initially pushed, which was this character with the red shorts. So just as an, as an example, Justin here is going to go and create and change something to the, to the project. So he's actually creating some materials and he's going to assign those materials to the character, changing the color to blue for the shirts and a green uh, shirt. Then you can see Justin going into source tree and source tree picked up the changes. Justin is going to stage those changes and then he's going to probably comment. And remember that commenting is only a local save. It doesn't go on the server. Whenever he's ready, he can push choosing the branch he wants to push on. Now that Justin pushed, I can actually go on my Git Kraken myself and I'm going to see the push from Justin. To get those changes, I need to pull, is what I'm doing now. And you can see that I successfully pulled, so now I'm up to date with Justin. You can see that Unity asked me to reload the scene because Justin pushed the scene, and then I get all the changes from Justin. So the whole point of this video is to show you guys how we changed from Trello to use Jira, which is, I feel, a little bit more robust. So if you wanna use Jira, which is completely free, you can go on their website and log on. Then you're gonna have a section to create a new project where you can choose uh, a type of project, choose next gen project. You can give it a name and create it. And then the whole point of Jira is a bit like a Trello board. It's a place where you can create a bunch of tasks. So you can see here in the roadmap is a place where you can assign huge milestones for your project. So a good thing to do here is to create different tasks or we call them epics such as alpha, beta, and lunch, for instance. 
you can then organize them chronologically and make them backed up like that. From an epic like this, you can create different uh, tasks or issues. So Jura has a bunch of little um, card or issue types, as you can see. I'm on the official website here. Um, so I mentioned the epic, which is some sort of a huge milestone. Uh, you definitely have bugs, which are the red icons that you can use. You have stories, which are the green icons. So the story is a smallest unit of work that needs to be done. And you have tasks, which are blue, and they represent a specific kind of you know task that you need to achieve. So the next thing I'm doing here is I'm creating a bunch of little tasks as tests to show you guys how that works. So I created task two and task three, and then a task that I want to do that makes the character spin in the game. So you also have a backlog, which is a place where you're going to see all of your tasks for the entire project. And this is also where you can create a new sprint. So a sprint is something shorter that you want to, you know, complete something very specific. Uh, in a specific amount of time. So it could be a week, two weeks. So in here in the sprints, I'm gonna rename the sprint, sprint one. And the goal here would be to work on the character and do some other stuff. Once the sprint is created, you can assign any task from your backlog to it. You can see me here creating just other tasks as bugs, just in case to show you guys how that works. And then I'm gonna assign a task to our sprint and then you can start a sprint whenever you want. So you can prepare sprints ahead of time. Here I'm gonna assign the amount of time I want for that sprint, the goal, the deadline, and then start it. So this new window here called board is where you can see your current sprint and your different status for um, your tasks. So you can see to do in progress, done and you can create as many as you want there and organize your task as you want. So I'm assigning this make character spin to myself and I'm going to get to work soon. You can also use comments and notes here to communicate with your team if you want and even emojis. So you can see that Justin has access to that as well since he's my team and he can even organize its own task. As you can see, Justin has his own stuff he wants to do, he created a task, he added it to the sprint, and he's gonna assign himself to it and get started on it. So one thing that we find important when we work in teams is whenever you work on something specific on your own, you should always work on a dedicated branch. So you have, when you work with Git, you always have this main branch that is called usually the master, but it's always important not to break that branch, to create your own branch like Justin is doing now, to work on your own stuff. In Jira, you can assign the keys to your task to a branch and it's gonna understand which task you're working on. To be able to tell Jira which task to keep track of, you need to go and set up your Jira project and connect it to Bitbucket as well. So you can go in code here on the left side and you just need to make sure that when you go on that link there, that you see your repository in that list. So you can see we see ours, so we're set and good to go. If you don't, just follow the steps there to connect your Jira to your Bitbucket. This is the key that I was referring to earlier. So when you make pushes or commits, if you put that key in the push itself or the commit, Jira is going to understand what you're trying to do. So you can see I'm working on my own task here. So I'm done with the code, makes the character spin, as you can see. And when I'm going to go and get Kraken and make my first branch, I'm going to create the branch with the name and the key of my current task. So I'm gonna click on branch here to create a new branch. And I'm gonna assign the key from Jira that is there to the name of my branch, just like Justin did. And then I'm gonna push my work in that specific branch so we don't corrupt the master branch. Whenever we approve work, which we're gonna show you later on, 
then we can merge our branch that has been approved into the master branch. So we never break or take any chances whatsoever. So you can see now I'm committing my, my work and I'm gonna push on my branch only. Once you do so, if you connected your code, you're gonna see that the card understand what you pushed for me and Justin and the branch that we created. So one thing that is uh, misunderstood sometimes is the pull request. So what is a pull request? It's pretty much once you work on a branch and you work on a task and you're, you think it's good and you're ready to merge it into the actual main branch, which is the master most of the time, then you need to ask people to review your work before we merge it, which is called a pull request. So you make a special push and people can review your work and say yes or no. So I'm going to create a pull request for my work. So I'm going to click on my card in Jira and I'm going to understand the Jira is going to show me the push that I've done. I'm going to click on it to do a pull request. And then you can choose on which branch you would like to merge it. I'm, gonna, I'm trying to merge it on master. You can add any comments if you want. It's not really mandatory. Then you can choose who's in charge of reviewing your work. So in this case, it's going to be Justin that's going to review my work, say if it's good or not, and you can create a pull request. When creating a pull request, you have a dedicated page there where you can have access to everything, all the files, and you can review the work. You can see Justin is not satisfied with one of my work and he's going to add a comment there. And I'm going to go back and read that comment on my side. And then I can go back in Unity and fix it or um, adapt my code or whatever you're working on. And once you think it's better, so you can see I changed, made a little update in my code. Once you think it's better, you can go back and just push again on that same branch so you're not pushing on the master again. So you can see here I'm choosing my file that I changed. You can see the change there. I'm gonna stage that, commit. And then I'm gonna go ahead and push that on my branch that I created. Doing so is automatically gonna update my pull request and Justin can see my changes and can decide whether it's approved or decline. So Justin here is gonna go and probably approve my work so we can move on. Once the work has been approved, you can choose the merge automatically from Jira to um, the master branch or the branch you chose to, ch to merge into. And it, as you can see, you can see the merge on the Git, Git Kraken or source tree. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go on the master branch because it's been merged and I'm just going to pull to update my master branch. And that's it. Since my work has been approved and I'm confident and it's been merged in the master branch, I can now move my card into done. And I can check the roadmap, the progress, and you can see that it's going to update uh, all of your tasks. So you can see that Justin's work has not been merged yet. So I'm going to right click on it and do merge to master, which is going to merge both Justin's work into the master. And then I can simply push that on the master branch so that everyone on the team has my work that has been merged and Justin's work that has been merged. So you should see the final result here as having Justin's scene and my spin. So since everything is functional and everything has been merged, we can move that to done. And we can even complete the sprint because that was the only two tasks we needed to do. And this you can rinse and repeat and create as many sprints as you want over the course of your project. Thank you guys for watching. I really hope it helps someone. And feel free to check out our channel and the game we're currently working on. And you can like, share, or follow us on Discord. Peace out, guys.